right now i want you to invite the presence of god into your house into your room by lifting up your hands in worship by blessing the name of the lord right now father we bless your name we exalt your name we magnify your name the bible says in the book of psalm 103 it says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits ah uh, it says that because there are times and there are seasons that we can forget there are situations that can make us forget about the testimonies of the yester years there are things that can come our way I will make us forget about how good God has been, uh, how much of a blessing he has been to us, uh, how many times he has delivered us, uh, how many times we should have died, we should have been sick, we should have been broken, but God delivered us. Uh, he said, forget not, forget not, because there is a tendency for us to forget in such times. There is a tendency for man to look at his situation and forget how good God has been, uh, but the Bible says, forget not his benefits, uh, forget Forget not all the things he has done. Forget not the life that he, he has given. Forget not the healing that has come your way. Forget not the deliverances of the pattern. Forget not all his benefits. Who who he who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Ah, who healeth all thy diseases? Ah, who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Lift up your voice right now. Kama no sakata nabra. Leko masika panakato nakata. Aloma dima kalabra nakato naman. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Somebody, don't stop praising God, don't stop blessing His name. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed as that of the eagle. Lift up your voice, Kanamaya. Le kambo sokoto no braka pata, alima kosante ne manakata, araba domani kipanto soada. We lift up your name, we magnify your name, we bless your name. We will not forget. Ah, for Bible says it is unrighteous to forget. Ah, it is ungodly to forget. It is even a sin to forget. How God has been good. That God has been good. Our God has been good. Your God has been good to you. He has kept you. Many are falling. A thousand fell on your right hand and ten thousand fell on your left, but it did not come nigh you. It has not come nigh you. If you are hearing me, if you are under the sound of my voice, if you can connect right now, it is because some have fell or have fallen, but you are standing. You are alive and well. Many have been taken down even by this pandemic, but it has not come nigh you. It came even knocking at your door, but mercy said, no, you should have been gone. You should have been down. Ah, but the Lord redeemed you. The Lord forgave you. The Lord kept you. The Lord protected you. The Lord healed you. The Lord renewed your strength. Renewed your energy. He provided for you. Lift up your voice right now. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord right now. Ah, don't stop praising him. Ah, don't stop worshiping him. Don't stop giving him thanks. He says, bless the Lord. Oh my soul, oh Lord God, ah, thou art very great, ah, thou art clothed ah, with majesty and with honor, ah, ah, who covered thyself with light, ah, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain, ah, ah, who layered the beams ah, of his chamber ah, ah, in the waters, ah, who maketh the clouds, ah, the chariots, ah, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, ah, and maketh his angel spirit, ah, ah, his ministers a flaming fire, ah, who laid the foundations of the earth uh, that it should not be moved forever. Uh, thou covered thyself uh, with a deep garment, uh, and the water stood above the mountains uh, at thy rebuke, O God. Uh, at the voice of thy thunder, uh, they hasted away, uh, they fled. Uh, uh, we lift our praises to the king of kings uh, who set a bound uh, that the waters may not pass over. Ah, uh, uh, he reigns, uh, he reigns and he rules. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what the enemy has 
done, uh, is doing, uh, or about to do. Uh, our God still reigns. Uh, he is the creator. Uh, he has set the orders of the day uh, and the orders of the night. Ah, uh, uh, the sun still rises. Ah, uh, uh, the stars still shine. Ah, uh, uh, the moon still shows up. Uh, it means our God still reigns. Uh, it means our God still rules. Uh, it means his principles, uh, his ordinances, uh, they still stand uh, if what has been happening. Uh, if Corona cannot change uh, the ethics, the decrees, uh, and the precepts of the world, uh, it means it cannot change uh, the fact that our God still rules. Uh, it cannot change uh, the fact that our God still reigns. Uh, it cannot change uh, the fact that God still sits uh, upon the circles of the earth. Uh, uh, lift up your voice. Come and uasakata. Repatolo mosikipa. Arabani minikatolo mrosa. Arambane ketele brandu wakapa. Arabati maria nakata. Le makoso batiki tanabra. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We thank you. We lift up your name. And we declare that there is none like unto our God. There is none beside thee. Ah, there is no other God like unto our God. For surely there is no God in all the earth. Ah, but the Lord God that created the heavens and the earth. Ah, the Lord God that rules over the affairs of men. And today we have come before for your throne speak oh god and let your people be encouraged be strengthened be healed be delivered be admonished and even lord give us strength that we will face the darkness outside give us light through your word and we will shine in these dark times and prevail and contend over the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Wherever you are, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate God. Put your hands together. The only legal contact your hand can make, make is with another palm of yours. It's another hand of yours. So you can put your hands together. You can high five. You can touch somebody. But you can put your hands together and celebrate God and say, God, we thank you. We still celebrate you. We still honor you. We still appreciate what you are doing in our lives right now. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate God right now. Hallelujah. And if you have not done it already, share that message. Call a friend. Invite somebody for a word for today. Hallelujah. Our word is coming from the, the book of John chapter 11, the book of John chapter 11. I will read as far as, it's a very long passage, but I'll read as far as God will permit us and will believe God to pick up certain, certain words, certain uh, rhema from the word of God today to encourage, to boost our, our faith so that we can take charge of the day. Hallelujah. Uh, John chapter 11 says that now a certain man was sick named uh, Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha the town of Mary and her sister Martha and it goes on to explain who this Mary and who this Martha is it says that it is it was that Mary which anointed the feet the Lord with ointment ah it was that Mary that sacrificed that broke the alabaster jar ah and brought forth her spike night ointment that filled the atmosphere and transformed the Ah, the, 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 the mood of the party ah, and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Ah, the Bible wants us to understand ah, that it was not an ordinary Mary. Ah, it was not an ordinary Lazarus. Ah, ah, the person that was sick, the person that was down, ah, the person that was broken, the person the person that was actually facing the issue that needed a divine intervention uh, was not an ordinary guy. Uh, was somebody who was close to Jesus. Uh, somebody who was sacrificed for God. Uh, somebody who was sat at the feet of Jesus. Uh, you remember the story of Mary and Martha in the book of Luke uh, where Martha was busy all around her. Uh, it was this same Mary that sat at the feet of Jesus and refused to be distracted. Uh, this was an ardent follower 
follower of Jesus. This was somebody that will, that will wait, that will sit at the feet of Jesus, will wait upon God uh, until he, she gets that word, until she gets that rima. This was a prayerful girl. Uh, this was a fasting girl. This was a worshiper. This was somebody who adored Jesus, uh, who would give her all to Jesus, who broke it all, uh, uh, who was not ready to even open it, uh, but was ready to smash everything uh, at the feet of Jesus. Uh, she loved Jesus so dearly. Uh, Ah, this was the Mary whose brother Lazarus was sick, uh, whose relative, uh, whose blood relative, whose connection, uh, uh, whose strength, uh, uh, whose friend, uh, whose closeness, uh, something of hers, uh, something dear to her, uh, something that she held so close, uh, was at the point of death, I uh, uh, was broken, was down, I uh, uh, was not well, needed a touch from God. Uh, this was the Mary that we were talking about, uh, and there are many Christians uh, around, uh, there are many under the sound of my voice. You have been faithful. You have been worshiping. You have been fasting. You have been giving. You have been praying. You have done everything. And I've ticked all the goods and all the yeses on the page. But there is something of yours that is at the point of death. There is something of yours that is facing a crisis. Even in this period of darkness, in this pandemic, Corona is knocking. It's threatening. Your business, your family, I'm employment. Uh, there is something of yours. Uh, your job. Uh, I spoke to one member uh, and yesterday had to encourage him. Uh, he said his business is down. Uh, he has not been able to sleep uh, because he has shut down the business uh, for almost three weeks uh, and doesn't know even how you open it. Uh, after the lockdown uh, he doesn't know whether he can open it uh, because shutting down for three weeks uh, means that he has squandered all his capital. Uh, there was something that was threatening. Uh, something wasn't looking good. Uh, the future was looking dark, uh, something close to him, uh, something he had bred, uh, something he had put out, uh, something he had produced, uh, something he had prayed about, uh, something he had fasted with, uh, something that was close to him, uh, something that out uh, of it, uh, he had paid his tithe, uh, he had paid his offering, uh, he has given to God, uh, something that was meant to be a blessing, uh, something that was meant to encourage him, uh, something that was supposed to hold his hand, uh, was at the point of dead, uh, uh, was dying, uh, was sick, was weary, was weak, was broken. And some of you, it may be your faith. It is weak, it is broken, it is down. And it needs a touch. You need a word. You need a rima. You need an encouragement. But it is nowhere to be found. You are not like the others. You were not distracted. You were not distracted like the matter. You were not outside the doors. But you waited at the feet of Jesus. You had that thing. And the word of God said, that thing that you got, nothing no one should be able to take it from you. But even that thing is being broken. That thing is being damaged. That thing is being bombarded. And the word of God came to speak to you today. I came for you today with a prophetic word from the altar of my father under the instructions of the prophet to give you this word that what you are holding on to, it will not go down. It will not be broken. It will not be destroyed. But the Lord God is the resurrector. It's a restorer. It's a redeemer. And by this prophetic word over your life, God will give you faith to hold on. He will give you hope to live on and to push on for not too long after this. Ah, God is going to speak on your behalf. And that word, and that word will cause you to come out with a blessing, to come out rejoicing, to come forth alive and well. Your business will not die. Your marriage will not die. Your children will not go down. That thing that you are promoting, that thing that you are looking forward to, that marriage, that proposal, that wedding, that business plan, that business idea that you are praying about, waited on, and they looked as if this year was the year, but so far, it has been bleak, it has been broken, pandemic after pandemic, corona after corona has come forth against it, and that idea seemed to be fading, but there is hope, even through this word of God for you that what you are holding on to will not go 
down the Bible is full of scripture and words and stories and true life lessons for us so that we understand that it is okay to be close to Jesus and still go through affliction it is okay to be close to the Lord to be faithful to the Lord to be faithful ah somebody will say why is all this happening ah don't don't, don't you care ah God that we perish it is okay to still have Jesus in your boat and face the storm and go through the storm and go through the things but the thoughts of Jesus was with them the words of Jesus was with them the presence of God was with them and today no matter what you are going through I came to admonish you that you are not in it alone for our God is a very present help in time of trouble Hey, it was this Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment. Hey, wipe his hair, wipe his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest, ah, Katunama, is sick. Oh, the person close to your heart who told you that God doesn't care about that business, who told you that God doesn't care about your family, who told you that God doesn't care about the state of your mind, your faith, who told you that God doesn't care whether you live or die, who told you, ah, God is true, God is love, the devil is a liar. When you look at the book of John chapter. 11 the same the same chapter verse 5 he said now Jesus did not just even love Lazarus he loved Mary and Martha and their and their brother Lazarus the love was there God still loves you I came to appoint and announce unto you that you are beloved by God your marriage is still upon the heart of God your business is still upon the heart of God God still cares about your children don't let the devil deceive you don't let the devil have lie to you and tell you and make you question the love of God. He said Jesus loved Mary, Martha and their brother Lazarus. He loved them. But the fact that he loved them didn't stop the sickness. Didn't stop the enemy. Didn't stop the devil. Didn't stop the pandemic. Didn't stop the corona. Didn't stop the dead. The devil is a liar. We will not be denied the fact that our God so loved. Bible says God so loved. But we say God so loved. And we know that our God is love. Oh, don't be deceived. Don't be broken. Don't be down. Don't be lonely. You are loved by God. I came to speak to somebody that is feeling lonely, that is feeling down, that is feeling broken and rejected. Men may have rejected you, but God still loves you. Ah, men may have disappointed you, but God still loves you. Ah, your business has no helpers, but God still loves you. Ah, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. Wherever you are feeling lonely, feeling bored, feeling isolated all alone ah, thank God you may have family but there are some people who are all alone in that one bedroom apartment, even that is okay they are all alone in a five bedroom ah, mansion, they are feeling lonely they are feeling poor, there is nobody there, there is not even a pet a dog around but I came to speak to you right now that God still loves you and he's very close, he He's very near. He's still with you. Don't be deceived. Don't let the devil lie to you. That God loves you. And he wants the best for you. He wants what's good for you. He's looking out for you. The devil is a liar. Corona or no corona. Pandemic or no pandemic. Lockdown or no lockdown. Our God is love. The Bible says. Ah, they sent for Jesus. Verse 3. They sent for Jesus and verse 4 says, when Jesus had that, when Jesus had that, hey, when Jesus had 
of the sickness. When Jesus had the prayer, when Jesus heard about the situation, when Jesus heard about what was going on, the scattering, the brokenness, the sickness that has kept him bed bound, that had locked him in, when Jesus had it, he gave a response. He spoke a word. He gave a declaration. And I came to speak unto somebody that even before the death of Lazarus, ah, Jesus had already given a word. Even before that thing came to the point of death, even before that marriage started breaking up, even that marriage moved onto the rocks, even before that job, that employment ah, became broken, even before your children became scattered, there was a word. A word had already been given. A word had already been declared. He said, and when Jesus had it, he did not move. He did not do anything. What he spoke was the word. What he declared was the word. And he declared the word and said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. I speak over your life and I declare over you right now that this situation will not take you down. It doesn't matter how many things go down. The word of God has already been released. The pronouncement of God has already been released. There is a declaration from the throne of grace that this thing will not kill you. It will not destroy you. It will not bring you down. Your marriage may go down, but it will rise again because a word has already been declared. Your business may go down, but it will rise again before, because even before the death, even before the brokenness, even before the scattering, a word had already gone out. The word had already gone out. The command has already been given. The declaration has already been made that this thing is not unto death. So even when death comes knocking, when death takes over, death will have to give up because the Lord has given a declaration. And somebody, I want you to believe it and declare it that my God has spoken over this thing that it is not unto death, but for the glory of God, for the glory of God, for the glory glory of God, for the glory of our God. Shakuna Manakata. Hey, he did not move. Oh, some are expecting a move and all that, but it was enough for the word to be released. Ah, the word being released was enough. It was all that was needed. Ah, the word was just enough. It was like God Himself. And somebody, you may not feel it, you may not sense it, you may not be seeing the hand of God. Nothing may seem to be happening. But shall may I announce unto you that a word has already been given the word for your healing for your restoration for your bouncing back for your breaking through has already been declared and that word are you ready for it and that word are you ready for it is that this is your year of harvest God knew it before Corona came and still declared it God knew it before Lazarus died and still declared it so it may look contrary but it is only the report of God, that we shall believe. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe what is happening? Ah, will you believe what is happening? For the just shall live by the faith, not by the seeing of the eye, not by the happenings around, but we believe and have faith in the word of God. If he has said and already declared before Corona came, before death came, before brokenness came, before unemployment came, before destruction came, that it is for his glory and that this is our year of harvest that indeed it is going to be our year of harvest ah fast track to the end of this story we know that it is this word that stood even death came death seemed to reign death took over for four days ah but that was not the end because the word of God had to come to pass ah it looked as if it is broken it looked as if it was down but at the end the the word of God will have its way. The word of God will move. The word of God will prosper. The word of God will endure. The word of God will outlast it. So it doesn't matter how many companies of yours go down. A word has already come forth. 
And if only you will believe that word, it will be your year of harvest. Out of the dust shall rise greater companies, better contracts. Are you clapping your hands and declaring, Yes, Lord? I came to encourage somebody today that the word had already been go had already gone down. Put that verse up there for me. Ah, John chapter 11, verse 4. Keep the verse on the scripture. Let somebody be encouraged. Keep the verse say, when Jesus had it. Oh, when Jesus had that, that it was sick, that it was lonely, that it was weak in faith, that somebody's company was collapsing, that somebody's employment was down, that somebody was going hungry. He gave a word. He could have moved because he had healed the sick before. Why is he not doing it? Ah, the word is enough. The word came before death. Ah, the word will endure during death. Ah, and it will prevail over death because that is what it does. I know my God, uh, that he is omniscient uh, and he is present even in my future uh, and he knows what he, I will go through. Uh, that is why he released the word, uh, not so that I will not, uh, I will not be, go, I will not go through the situation uh, but whilst going through the situation uh, I will have something to hold on uh, and today I came to encourage you uh, that hold on to his word uh, hold on to your prophecy uh, hold on to that decree, uh, hold on to that prayer, uh, hold on to that declaration uh, for when you hold on to his word. That word will lift you up. That word will push you up. Even if it goes down. Even when death takes over. That word will arise. That word will declare. And what is that word? That it is not unto death. Even death comes, it is not the end. He told, he told them Lazarus and he spoke about Lazarus that Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. So even if death comes there, it is the middle of the story. It is not the end of the story. That was supposed to be the end. But God said it is not unto death. It will not end in death. It might pass through death. It might pass through issues. It might pass through brokenness. It might seem unemployed. It might seem weak. But whatever it is, it will come out of it. Because death is not the end. And I speak over your life that whatever you are going through, it's not the end of your story. It's not the end of the year. It's not the end of your hope. It's not the end of your faith. It is not unto death. The end is the glory of God. He said the end is the glory of God. No matter the death, no matter Corona, no matter the shutdown, no matter the hunger, no matter the pain, no matter the boredom, no matter the loneliness, no matter how many times you go down, the Bible says for a righteous man, he falls seven times, but again he rises. He will rise again. You will live again. You will be employed again. You will go out again. You will move again. You will do work again. Your marriage will live again. There will be joy. There will be celebration. There will be the glory of God. At the end of all this, death came knocking thinking that once again it was going to be the end. Ah, but he that created had already given a word that even if death comes, it is not. It is not going to end in death. Oh, Katuna Makata, this sickness is not unto death. Death will be in the middle. Death will think it has ended. Only for the story to continue. Death will not be a full stop, but a semicolon, but a comma, after which we will write many paragraphs. We will write new stories. We will continue. And the end of this story was the glory. At the end of this writing, at the end of this scripture, we saw that indeed death came. Indeed death and brokenness came. Indeed boredom came. Indeed weakness came. Indeed you were unemployed. Ah, indeed your job was scattered. Your family was scattered. Your finances was scattered. But it was not the end. And the end is going to be glory. Glory in your finances. Glory in your works. Glory in your family. Glory in your marriage. The devil is a liar. Will you put your hands together? I shout glory! Kadona Masakata. It is not unto death. I love it that God has already released a word. That the word about this year being our year of harvest 
came before Corona. Ha! Corona came and entered this nation, but it was after the word had already been declared. So whether Corona comes in the middle somewhere, whether death comes in the middle somewhere, whether affliction comes in the middle somewhere, I believe this word. I hold on to this word. I catch this word. I carry this word because death may come, but what I have been told that it is not the end. Brokenness may come, but what I have been told that it is not the end. Who told you this is going to be your end? Who told you you are finished? Who told you your job is broken? Who told you you will die? The devil is a liar. I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works and the glory of God. Your business will not die, but it shall live and declare the works and the glory of God. Your family will not die, but they shall live and declare the works and the glory of God. Are you putting your hands together say us and jesus waited ah he waited and it was all part of the story because he wanted to prove that he is not as the god that makes things add up sometimes when god works people try to calculate and make sense out of it but god wanted to prove that yes i can heal the sick but sometimes you will tell me, oh, it was a self-limiting thing already. It was going to happen anyway. It was going to work anyway. My business contract was going to come anyway. My breakthrough was going to come anyway. My marriage was going to come anyway. My things were going to happen anyway. It was going to do anyway. If just the sickness had gone away, if Jesus had stepped in and healed the sickness, somebody would have said, oh, this thing would have gone anyway. Somebody would have made sense out of it. We tried to rationalize the supernatural but God wanted to prove ah Jesus was speaking and saying not this time around I want to go beyond the deepest and the worst of the situation to speak unto my people a word that even at the worst I am able to deliver for he is able to deliver to the atomos. The atomos include them that are broken rotten the situation that you have given up on. Don't give up on that pain. It is still going to come alive. Are you putting your hands together and declaring yes? Come and do us. Verse 15 of the scripture tells us. Verse 15 says, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. Hey, I read this in and I shivered. I said, wow, what is this? To the intent that ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go to him. Kalamana. He said, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. I am glad for your sake that when death came, when the situation came, when the brokenness came, ah, it was not prevented. Uh, it came, it threatened, it broke you, it brought you down. But so that I can prove that I am not able, I am not an addition Ah, to your faith. I am not an addition to your effort. But when your effort is gone, when all you have done and, and have tried to do is not enough, then I am your all in all. When death comes and it finishes you, when everything comes and it's scattered, ah, then I do what you have never seen. Then I do what you have never heard. Then I do what has never entered into the hearts of man. Are you getting ready, somebody? to see what has never been seen before because you have seen God move when things were working. You have seen God move when things were halfway done. You have seen God adding the cream to the top of the issue. But God is going to start and begin and work his way right to the end. God is going to start with nothing. God is going to start with brokenness, with death, with nothingness and end it for you. And that is going to be a testimony. That is going to push your faith uh, that is going to make you uh, believe uh, that your God uh, is the will, is the worker uh, and the rewarder uh, of them that diligently seek him. Uh, the devil is a liar. It is still our year of harvest. Verse 23 brings us to the to reality that when Jesus came and was trying to speak, Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Your business will rise again. Your, 
your 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 your, your employment you will be employed even at a better level you'll be promoted at a better level i prophesy over your life that your finances will rise again the economy will rise again our our nations will rise again we will not go down the devil is a liar we will rise again we will rise again we will rise again he said, Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Ah, uh, Proverbs chapter 17, I think verse 17. Ah, uh, can you give me that scripture? Let me see if that is what I'm looking for. Ah, uh, Proverbs 17, verse 17. Uh, a friend loved at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Ah, uh, Mary and Martha had a brother that even by scripture was given to them for such a time as this. Ah, uh, there was a storage, there was a bank account, there was something they were depending on her in the time of adversity in the time of pain it was their brother Lazarus and most of most people have been trusting in certain things trusting in some men trusting in other things but those things are failing those things are being broken a brother that was born for them that was born with them that was worked with them that way they had grown up with her and that brother was men for a time like that in the face of adversity in the face of the pandemic that account that they were relying on that savings that they were relying on seemed to be disappearing seems to be broken seems unreliable even at this very moment but God came to speak a word and said your brother will arise again your family will live again your account will rise again our economy will rise again what we are relying on God will give his strength to be able to stand again it doesn't matter whether the enemy has taken it down or broken it apart or scattered it that it cannot be put together again God is speaking a word that it will arise again it will arise again it will arise again are you putting your hands together and saying it will arise again ah, and look at Martha Martha spoke a word he said I know that it shall arise again at the last day <laughs> Oh, said God, yeah, you are speaking a word, but as for this year, dear, we have given up on it. Oh, God, he said, yes, I believe, but not for this year. As for this year, what Corona has done, oh, let's push it back. As for this year, what the pandemic has scattered, I don't think I can work this business. I don't think this idea can come for her. I don't think this marriage is still possible. I don't think I can get my wedding this year. I don't think my children can be promoted. I don't think that scholarship is possible. I don't think I can stand again. I don't even think I will be well again. Somebody under the sound of my voice, don't postpone the word of God. For Bible said, faith is now. Ah, now faith is. If you have faith for now, not tomorrow, not next year, not two years from now, not ten years from now, I speak over that thing that God is saying, even now, even this year, it is still possible. And with man, things seem impossible. But with our God, all things mean all things. And he says, all things are possible. Will you put your hands together and say, it is possible. Ah, uh, it is possible for your business to rise. It is possible ah, for your family to rise. It is possible for that finances ah, to rise. It is possible for that thing that has gone beyond the deadline for you to make. It is possible for you to get that scholarship. It is possible even in this year because a word had already gone forth and the word is coming to you again that it will arise. It will arise. It will arise. It will arise. And don't be like matter and say, I no, yes, I have faith, but not for today. I have faith, but not for this time. I have faith, but not for this marriage. I believe it will happen in the sweet by and by. Maybe 10 years from now. Maybe when the economy is put together again. Maybe when they call me back again. Maybe after all oh, this is gone. And I get six months to put myself together. Maybe after ah, they start giving me some money. Maybe after my salary is increased. Maybe 
maybe after her. My children are grown. Maybe after her. Everything comes in line. But God is not waiting for everything to fall in place. He is promising and speaking and declaring over your life. And I prophesy to you that it shall arise. Even this year, it shall work out. Even this year, that business will work out. That idea in your mind, it will be a breakthrough. And it is still possible this year. The word is about this year, not next year. The word that will bring glory is not about the sweet by and by. It's not a debi debi a be a ye thing. It is a ye ye data. It is a ye ye a ye ye. It is happening even now as we speak. The word is alive even in your mouth. It is there. It is there. The word of God is not slow. The word of God, Bible say, it is sharper. It is quicker. It is alive. Ah, it moves faster and it cuts faster than any sharper than any two-edged sword. That is the word that I speak to you. Ah, that word will go to work. It will start moving. Even only, even, even when, and only if you believe. Are you putting your hands together and saying, "I believe"? Kanama sukadaba. Hey, kadama nakata. Rabadu kata. But verse 25, Jesus gave a response to Martha. He said, Martha, what are you talking about? Hey, why are you having faith for tomorrow? Why are you having faith ah, for next year? Why are you having faith for 10 years from now? Why is your faith for the sweet by and by? Why are you saying ah, that it will work sometime? Ah, it will work. I know that it will resurrect in that day. In that day. I am speaking about this day, not that day. How can the resurrection and the life be standing right in front of you? This is the word of God. John 11 verse 25. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. All you need to do is believe in me. And though you were dead, yet will you live. And though your hope was dead, though your hope in that marriage is dead, though your hope in that business is dead, though your hope for that year is dead, yet it shall live. Yet it shall live. Yet it shall live. Yet it shall live. I came to prophesy to somebody that it is time it is time for your business to leave, it is time for your marriage to leave, don't be broken, don't be scattered, don't be thoughtful about Corona and forget that a word came and that word came before Corona and that meant that the word would leave and outlive Corona and that word is that this is your year this is still your year Ah, if you believe it will live, if you believe it will come alive. If you believe, it will work. Are you putting your hands together and saying, I believe? Kalama Sukitanaba. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Hey, Katuna Katanabra. Hey, Sutani Kapanabra. Ah, the Mary gave the word. Oh, verse 27, she gave the word. Ah, Kutana Brana Kadabra. La Kutana Brana Kapa. She gave what Jesus needed. Ah, without this thing, it was impossible for the thing that happened after to happen. Ah, without this, it was impossible. Ah, for the living to come. For the rising to come. For the hope to come. She said, and this is what God had been looking for. This is what Jesus had been looking that you will still believe the word, not the dead. It is okay and normal to believe. Ah, when Corona had not come, it was okay and it was normal to believe when there was no shutdown, when there was no lock in, when you were still going to work, when that boy was still visiting. But now it seems that the belief must be put aside for you to face reality. I came to speak to you something that is more real than the reality that you are facing, which is the word of God and all you need to do is believe her and she said unto him yeah Lord I believe that thou art the Christ the son of God we should come into the world I believe that you are the resurrection and the life I believe all you have said that if you say my brother should leave my business should leave my marriage should leave my finances should leave my children will leave my loved ones will leave I believe somebody can you put your hands together 
lifted up and say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Katuna makata. Ah, once he said that, Kono masukata. Alumana kata. Ah, so manakata nabra. Hey, kele manuata. She went her way. I came to speak to somebody. Ah, kolo manuakata. Rabano, all you need to do is believe. All you need to do is believe. Ah, and she went her way. And when she went her way, Jesus also moved on to do what he had to do, to work what he had to work. Ah, you just believe and leave the rest to God. And he said, the next verse, give me the next verse. Ah, verse 28. There is a revelation. She said so. And she went her way. Ah, somebody, just believe and go your way. Just believe and move to your things. Just believe and start doing what you have to do. Ah, just believe and put it aside. Let Jesus go to work. And as she believed and went her way, Jesus moved right to the tomb. Jesus went to do what he came to do. And I came to speak over your life that if you will only believe, the word of God will go right to work on your life, on your business, on your family, on your spiritual life, on your physical life, on your finances. The word of God will start moving. Just believe. All you need to do is only believe. Kalama, ah, sukinama katana bra, ah, lemanu kata. Verse thirty-five. I need to run quick, quickly, but verse thirty-five tells us that Jesus wept. Ah, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched. The feelings of our infirmity. Who told you that God is standing aside? His heart is bleeding, but his heart is not bleeding. Because of the situation, because the situation is nothing. His heart is ble bleeding because of the unbelief. Because of the fact that if man is able to stand, all this thing will be over. Because death has been made stronger than God. No, it cannot be. It will not be. Jesus wept because he saw the situation and knew that it was little before God. Yet people did not believe. He saw the situation and felt for them and felt for their pain and felt their head. He felt their weakness. He felt their unbelief. He felt their boredom. He felt everything and he wept. When he saw Mary, he wept. When he saw Mary weeping, he wept. Jesus is feeling for you. He understands what you are going through. He understands how you feel. He feels. He created you. He knows the emotions. He knows the roller coaster. He knows everything. He knows the ups and the downs. He feels and he understands. He is not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. But he was he was touched. He was hurt. He was bruised just as we are. He faced what we face. And even worse, he went through death itself and resurrected only to prove to us that God reigns even over death. That when the situation is hopeless, he still reigns. And Jesus said, verse 40, I said unto thee, that if thou wilt believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. If thou will believe, verse 4 tells us, verse 3, verse 4 tells us that the word was given for the glory of God. But the glory doesn't come until we believe. The glory doesn't come until we believe. Jesus said, ah, it was, Martha has believed and has left. Martha believed and said, no, Jesus, just go and do the thing. Mary, come. Mary, you need to believe. I have told you that if only you believe. Ah, how can one that sat at the feet of Jesus refuse to be distracted? Ah, I was not full of the pleasures of the world. Sat at the feet when all things were happening and received a word. How can she doubt in this time? Ah, Jesus looked at them and said, I told you, you have to believe. There is a word that I gave you and you still have to believe. When you sat at my feet, when you came for power night, when you came for Sunday service, when you came for Tuesday service, when you came for Wednesday service, when you came before me praying, there was a word I gave you. And have I not told you? Did I not tell you? Did I not speak to you? He said, have I not said unto you? It is the past. I told
told you that this thing will come. But if you believe, ah, you will see the glory of God. There is glory after Corona. There is glory after the pandemic. There is glory after the lockdown. There is glory. There is so much glory because it cannot take us down. It cannot kill us. It will not destroy us. Therefore, surely we know that there is glory after this. We believe God. We believe what God has said. Then he said, verse, four, verse 41, they took away the stone from the place, Katona Mayana. Hey, Katona Makata, take away the stone. Hey, verse 39, let's go back to verse 39. Hey, verse 39, he said, take away the stone. Ah, Martha, sister of Mary, that was there, said the Lord, by this time he's thinking, for he had been dead four days. Take away the stone. What is limiting the resurrection? Ah, it's not the death. Ah, because death had already been defeated. But what is limited? The rising of your business ah, is what men have put on it. Ah, is the stone that men have put on it. Because Lazarus was already dead. Ah, but God's word had woken him up. And he said, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Take away the stone. But the predictions of men, the predictions of the economy, the predictions of the experts were saying that it was not possible. The business was not possible. Ah, if you roll away, it will be further loss. It will be further brokenness. It will be further hopelessness. You will lose more money. You will be broken. Your heart will be broken. Ah, your expectation will be cut shot. Ah, your heart will be wounded. Ah, for when the hope of a man is dashed, he said, hope deferred makes the heart sick. He said, don't have too much hope because your heart will be sick. Don't put too much in this. Don't pray too much about this. It is not possible. Hope for the next year. Look forward to 2022. Look forward to 2024. I came to speak unto you that listen not to the aspects of men. Roll away the stone. Roll away the burden. Roll away anything that man has used to stop you, to guard you, to keep your business dead, to keep your family dead, to keep your finances dead, to keep anything of yours dead. The devil is a liar. The word of God is coming and you need to wrap it up. You need to roll away the predictions of men, the calculations of men, the limitations of men. When you roll it away, your life will rise. Your business will rise. Ah, your loved ones will rise. Are you putting your hands together and say, we will rise? Take away the stone. Ah, uh, there are demonic altars limiting companies. It is not corona. It's not even the sickness. It's not even the death. There are things that are altars. A stone represents an altar. There is an altar in your background, in your family, uh, in your life uh, that is limiting. There is a word. There is a pronouncement. There is a thing that they put on all dead bodies, on all dead companies, on all dead marriages uh, to make sure that they don't rise. There is a thing they put. Ah, uh, uh, that is what they do. It was their culture. It seemed like the norm. Ah, uh, to come. Uh, people that were dead uh, to put a stone uh, on anything that was dying, uh, to put a stone uh, to put an altar, to say a limit uh, so your family, uh, it is said that after 40 nobody can marry uh, uh, so now you look at 40 uh, none of your aunties married uh, after 40, uh, none of them married after 35, uh, none of them could stay married, uh, none of them gave birth ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, in wedding uh, after marriage, they all gave birth out of wedlock, ah, uh, uh, but I came to speak to you, uh, and you believe that prophetic word that this is your year of harvest that you will get married and it doesn't matter the altar responsible for keeping marriages down businesses down well down in your family as you roll it away it is the word of God coming to work but it is your responsibility to lift the stone to roll away the stone there is one thing you need to do which is believe but there is an effort you need to put in which is to roll and to deal with the stone and to deal with the limitation of anything fighting and resisting the word of God in your life, in the demonic altar, in the way of life, in the limitations of men, in the predictions and projections from the background of your father and your mother and from the life and from Africa, anything that they have said concerning Ghana, concerning Africa, concerning the nations of the world that is limiting the word of God from having a glory, from having glory, from taking place, resurrected, 
building our business, causing our economies to rise. Let that stone be rolled away. Let that stone be pushed away. Let that stone be destroyed. Let that altar catch fire. Uh, some of the altars have guards. Bible says that and they sent soldiers, they paid soldiers to guard the entrance of the tomb uh, because they knew that the resurrection was inevitable, was irrevocable, was going to be irrefutable. Some of you, uh, your business is broken, is down. Your marriage, your life seems bleak. Your finances, that marriage, that plans that you had for your wedding, it seems scattered. Ah, but the enemy knows that your rising is not going to be contested with. Ah, knows that your rising is only a matter of time. He knows that your rising is still inevitable. So not only have they put a rock and a stone over your grave, ah, but they have hired men. They have collaborated with people. They have sent men to stand guard and ensure that you never rise. Ah, but Jesus rose on that faithful day. Ah, shook her. the foundations of the tomb her. he rolled away her. and the men fell as they were dead her. I speak over your life her. that anyone that has been deployed her, to speak work, her. to speak her. damnation, her. to speak luminous, her. to speak pain her. to speak sorrow, her. to speak destruction her. over your life her. to ensure her. that your business doesn't rise, her. that your marriage doesn't take off, her. that your ministry doesn't rise, her. that nothing good comes out of your life, her. I speak that word uh, over your life uh, uh, that the resurrection uh, defeated the grave. Uh, therefore uh, the stone will be rolled away uh, and any man employed uh, to ensure that you never rise. Uh, to ensure that it never happens. Uh, let them be slain. Uh, let them be destroyed. Uh, let them be silenced. And Jesus didn't even say arise for Lazarus was already risen. Because the word for his resurrection had already been declared. It was declared way before he died. Jesus just stood and spoke what was left. That is come forth. When the stone was rolled away, Lazarus had already risen. So there was no need. Whenever Jesus was resurrecting somebody, he would say, rise and come forth. But with Lazarus, the rise had already been given. The commandment to rise had already been given. So he just said, roll the stone away. Lazarus, come forth. Let them see that your business is living. Let them see that your marriage is still working. God is waiting for a public show to show to the world after this corona that his people will still rise, that the church will still rise in glory, that businesses of saints, of Christians will still rise, that marriages will still work, that your children will still sail through, that that scholarship is possible, that all the goodness, all the prophetic word uh, is still coming to pass. Uh, he said, oh father, I like the prayer that he prayed. He said, father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. You heard me you heard me uh, when I spoke the word. You heard me when I prayed. Uh, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of these people that stand by, uh, may I announce unto you uh, that there are many standing by. Uh, there are many watching to see uh, what will come out of your business. Uh, what will come out uh, of that thing. What will come out. What good will come out of this corona for you. Uh, but for their sakes, uh, God will not disappoint you. Uh, for their sake, uh, your business will rise. Uh, Jesus will say, I know that it is possible. Uh, but for the sake of the unbelievers, uh, for the sake of those that hate me, uh, for the sake of those that are looking to see my downfall, uh, that are looking to see uh, that I will not get married, uh, for the sake of the witches and wizards, uh, uh, for the sake of the people who bless outwardly, uh, but they curse inwardly, uh, all those ill wishing me, uh, for their sake, ah, uh, uh, God is going to cause uh, something spectacular, uh, something you have never seen before, uh, to rise, are you ready for that day, uh, God is going to vindicate you, uh, in time, he's going to vindicate uh, his word over you, uh, his prophetic word over your life, uh, it is still possible even after death has had his way because death is not the end he said lose him and let him go today we are going to pray a prayer anything that the enemy is placing at the limitation over our prophetic word corona cannot be a limitation over your prophetic word 
Corona cannot be a limitation over anything that God has spoken to you privately, publicly about. It is still possible. It is still possible. Jesus spoke one word and said, come forth. And today that is your word. Your business is going to come forth. Hey, we are going to speak come forth. We are going to declare come forth. We are going to declare that God's people are coming forth. And they are not coming forth bound. But the next word was to lose him and let him go. They are going to come forth free to move about. They are not going to come forth stinking. Many were expecting that they will come forth stinking. Many were expecting they will come forth broken. Many were are expecting that even if you come out, you come out in some way broken down. You will not be able to pray as you ought. You will lose faith. You will not even be able to attend church as you ought. But your faith is getting stronger. Your business is getting stronger. Ah, many experts are prophesying doom and gloom for us. But we are going to surprise them. It is going to be like a shock. We are going to come forth. We are going to be loose. We are going to move about. We are not going to stink. There is not going to be any smell of what we have been through. We will not look like a generation that has even been through Corona. We are not going to be like the generation that has been through fire. We will come out of fire and there will not be any smell of smoke on us. We will come through the waters and will not be as if we are wet. We will not even go through things for the things to rub off on us. But God said he has brought us to a wealthy place for thou hast taken us through the fire. We have been through the waters but in the end you brought us to a wealthy place. It was all part of the story that death could not hold him down. And today what could not hold Savior down, I declare it's not going to hold you down and the expectations of the wicked concerning you that you are going to come out some way it's going to be disappointed you are going to come out better you are going to come out stronger you are going to come out fresher you are going to come out looser you are going to come out freer you are going to come out powerful I speak over your life right now that today as you declare these two words that your business is coming forth say business come forth marriage come forth wealth come forth opportunity Come open doors. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Makula Masakatana. Lift up your hands wherever you are and rise to your feet. We are going to speak the word of God. We are going to agree with God. He said, by the mouth of two or more witnesses, a thing is established. When God speaks, you have to speak it. When God declares it, you have to declare and agree with God for it to happen in your life. The word of God is looking for an agreement. He said, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. The word of God, Jesus is standing. Jesus is the word made flesh. So when the word comes forth like this, it is just knocking. And somebody, this word is hitting you. It's hitting somewhere. It is knocking. It's knocking. The only way you can rejoice, the only way you can enjoy with the word of God is when you open the door, you allow it to come in and you agree with the word of God that it will not fail. It will not stop. It will not be denied. It will still work. It will still cause you to rise. Today, rise with me. And we are going to declare this prophetic word that we are coming forth. That we are coming forth. Whatever is over your life, that seems to be tired. Whatever aspect of your life seems to be going down, there is a word for it. And that word, that statement is to come forth. Let your life come forth. Let your faith come forth. Let your spiritual life come forth. Let your finances come forth. Let your marriage come forth. Let your emotions come forth. Whatever is going down, whatever is afflicted, whatever is dying, whatever is dead, whatever is buried, come forth. Lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Say I declare by divine authority and in the name of Jesus that right now by the word of the Lord once he has spoken and twice we have heard we come into agreement with his word that after this, that after death, that after corona, that after the pandemic we are coming forth. We are coming forth. Our businesses, they are coming forth. Our lives, they are coming forth. Our wealth, they are coming 
coming forth. Our power is coming forth. Our graces, they are coming forth. Our churches, they are coming forth. We clap our hands. And as you lift your voice, let everything that is dying, that is afflicted, that is dead, that is even buried in your life that you have given up on, speak that word that it is coming forth. That it is coming forth. That it is coming forth. Kamalo sakatana bra. Araba na kapani manapa. Alakatana bra no katana bra. Araba ni manakala bra. In the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up prayers. And today, as we declare by prayers, how we build ourselves in our most holy faith to believe. How we declare right now, how we faith that we are coming forth. That we are coming forth. That we are coming forth, that what the enemy shut down is coming forth, that what Corona came to scatter, it is coming forth, that what this pandemic came to destroy, it is coming forth, that what our faith could not hold, now it is coming forth, now it is coming forth, now it is coming forth, not tomorrow, not next year, not next five years, not next ten years, but even this year, they will come forth, 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 Come forth. Are you clapping your hands? Akona mana kapana pa. Araba na katana prana pa. Isaac believed and he sold in that same year, the year that was famine, the year wherein there was famine, he sold. And in that same year, what men thought was a burial ground for seeds. When seed go into the ground, they do not come out. They do not germinate. They do not bear forth fruit. So they were buried. Isaac said, "I have." the word and that word is able to keep my seed alive my words alive my de deliberations alive my ideas alive my marriage alive my business alive today as you lift up your voice ah, if only you will believe and speak that word it will come forth it will come forth your investment will come forth they will not die death is not the end even when death comes it will rise ah, even when death comes there is a resurrection if you went that come, it will not be the end. I speak over your life that today as you clap your hands and stamp your feet, ah, there will be a resurrection of all that is dead, of all that is resurrected, of all that the enemy has taken from you. Are you clapping your hands? Are you agreeing with the word of God? Lift up your voice and pray. Clap your hands and pray. The devil is a liar. We refuse to believe the predictions of men that we are going to stink, that we are going to come out stinking, that we are dead and we are hopeless and there is nothing that can be done with us. But as we clap our hands, we come alive by the word of God. For by the word of God, the dry bones, they came alive. And by the word of God, our businesses, whatever concerns us, that the enemy is trying to slay her, it's trying to destroy her, it's trying to put to death her as we clap our hands. It is coming forth, it is coming forth, it is coming forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you are not gonna come forth the way you, you think they think you are gonna come forth. Broken, scattered, torn apart, all over. My God, you are gonna be together. You are going to have it together. They will wonder and they will question if you are the same person that went through the corona season. They will wonder and they will question if it is your business, if it is the same business. Oh, because you are coming out strong. Hey, Kabada, let's deal with any demonic altar, any limitations of men anything that has set certain patterns in place in your life that when such things come they never rise. That when such things come, they swallow up everything in the way. That this is the end. There is a stone. There is a rock. There is an altar. There is a demonic assignment to keep you down. 
no matter the word of God, no matter the prophecy, no matter the declaration, no matter the pronouncement, no matter your faith, if you don't deal with that altar, you will not rise. But today we came to speak, take charge and take over and break every demonic altar. Ah, altar, oh altar, altar that is taking lives, altar that is taking what God, what is meant for God, altar that is taking property, sacrifices, wealth that is meant for the kingdom. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings chapter 13, he said, and the man of God came from Judah ah, to Bethel, where the altar of God, where the altar of Baal was, and spoke against the altar, ah, because the altar was interfering with the word of God, with the fruits of God, with the blessings of God. Ah, money that was meant to come ah, to the altar in Jerusalem was finding his way ah, to the altar at Bethel. Wealth, businesses, hope, ideas that was supposed to come to the kingdom in Jerusalem, to the people of Judah, was finding his way to the people of the world. And today we came to deal with any altar that keeps us down, that keeps us broken, and sends wealth, and sends ideas, and sends hope to the people of the world. As the man of God spoke against that altar, today we came, ah, and from Jerusalem, from Zion, the mountain of the Lord, we came to attack every altar diverting, every altar limiting, and every altar restricting the blessings and the word and the prophecies of God over our life. That let that altar say catch fire, let that altar catch fire, let that altar catch fire, whatever it is, any altar to keep your life localized, to keep your life limited, that your company cannot go outside, it cannot become international, it is meant to keep you down, that wickedness is broken in the name of Jesus, as you clap your hands and as you lift your voice, even after this corona, you are going to spread abroad, even after this corona, you are going to increase, even after this corona, you are going to come forth, and everything that has been used to bind you is going to be cut loose, we command your freedom, we command your liberty. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You have room to operate. You have room to grow. And Jabez said, oh, that that would have blessed me indeed. And enlarge, and enlarge my territory. I speak right now. That sorrow will not have reign over you. But you will enlarge. You will expand. You are coming forth expanded. You are coming forth enlarged. Are you clapping your hands? Kabadu sakatanabra. Hirakamakanabra. Arabanakata. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes the wickedness of the enemy is that they keep you bound for a long time. So when it's time to rise, you can't even rise. Sometimes you can see when you go around, a man went around India and saw a huge elephant tied by a small rope. And the question is like, this elephant can break this rope if he wanted to. But the man told him that the elephant was tied as a as a child and could not wrestle his way. And because it had been the rope has been there for a long time, even at the point where it can break free, it is not able to break free. Anything that has been used to tie you down for such a long time that you have come to believe that it is impossible. Any wickedness that is exacting upon you, hey, that you have come to believe that it is impossible, let that yoke be broken, let that limitation be broken. For by reason of the anointing, every yoke and every limitation is broken in the name of Jesus. Therefore, by the anointing, even upon this house, upon my father, the prophet of God, let every yoke and limitation to keep you bound, even after this season is over, to keep you hard enough, to keep Keep you broken up to keep you limited to keep you bowed down let that limitation up say break command your freedom and your liberty you will go forth bible says how god anointed jesus christ with the holy ghost and with power who went about, who was not limited, who went to wherever he ought to be and wanted to be and wished to be. Ah, doing good. You will go about after this period because it's a period of anointing and empowerment. And you will do good and you will heal, you will restore, you will bring grace, you will bring hope to men in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you thanks, we give you praise because we know 
that even before all this, you had given your word. That when it is broken, that when it is scattered, that when it is dead, you can still put it together. We know that we will come out alive. We will not come out the way the enemy thinks we will come out. But we will come out better because your word has gone forth. Thank you for your word that it is still our year of harvest. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you put your hands together wherever you are? Let's celebrate God. Let's thank God for what he has done today and keep confessing this word that I'm coming forth. No matter what comes your way, speak this word. Speak these words. You are coming forth. My business is coming forth. When you hear a negative report, my business is coming forth. When you hear something terrible, my life is coming forth. When you hear this and my loved ones are coming forth, just speak it. That is your word for today. And as you continue to declare it, I speak that indeed, after this thing, you come out better. The expectations of them that think you will not make it will be disappointed. And you will make it. We will make it this year. We will do well. It will be the best year ever. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. If you want to give 05 500 002, 05 what a good time to sow, what a good time to be a blessing to the body of Christ. God bless you as you give 05 500 002. Tomorrow, 9 a.m., 6 p.m., 6 30 p.m., we have service. You can join us on all our networks. The prophetic word of God is coming forth another prophetic word for you in this time you need that word invite somebody get yourself ready take a shower dress up in your in your in your church attire sit in church which is your room which is your house and take a picture take a selfie if you send it to us uh, we want to see you having church because we believe that church has gone beyond these walls we have all many churches, many EWC branches in the homes, in the neighborhoods, all over the place, all over the nations. So you want to see the church that is going on in your house, take a picture and send it to us. 9 o'clock, 6.30 p.m. Join us. Connect live. Don't let this stop you because we are coming forth. But we are coming forth together. God bless you. God keep you and preserve you. See you tomorrow. Love you.